The best cameras ever are about to come our way, Tony, because the Summer Olympics are going to be in 2024, and that's basically the Camera Olympics. Yeah, and I don't know anything about sports. I just know there is going to be a gold medal between Ken and Nikon and Sony because this is when they all fight it out. They release their biggest, best stuff because they are going to be showcased around the world. Okay, we're going to talk about some rumors. We think that the Canon R1 is going to come out, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about two possible cameras that Sony could bring out for the Olympics and what Nikon might have up their sleeve. I think so we're going to see a Z1. A Z1? Oh my gosh, Tony. This is the Picture This Photography Podcast where we talk about all things photography from speculations to news to just some chats about some photographer stuff. And also let's talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. If you want your own website, store, portfolio, gallery, you can make it all happen with Squarespace. I was just dragging new pictures into mine oh. and I made a new category as well. Oh, how, was it difficult? No, actually, it was very easy. So I made a new category for like portraits versus my more surreal portrait work. Mm. And it was so fun to separate my work into new categories. And I was inspired to shoot something new that I'll have out soon. You're going to love making your own Squarespace website, seeing your work, making a store, selling prints. Check it out for free. No credit card needed. Just go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. Let's start by talking about why the Olympics are so important to the Japanese camera companies. And I'm not even sure I know why, but I just know that it is. Going back to like the 50s, this is when people around the world would see photographers on the sidelines with their big cameras and their huge lenses. And those photographers, to me, I always thought they looked so cool. Yeah, well, it's like endorsements for sports, you know, like your favorite athlete wears Nike and you want to wear Nike. You're, you see the Olympic sidelines and it's all white Canon lenses. You think, oh, I think I need to be like a pro and shoot it, that. If they shoot Canon, then I should Why too. not me? Yeah, I think it's significant. And then also all of the pictures are coming out and they're some of the best pictures in the world. So if mm -hmm. it's shot on Canon or Sony or Nikon, then you know that that camera company is the creme de la creme. There has historically been one camera company taking the gold every Olympics, and that has been Canon. Canon has they been cleaning up. They are in up. the hands of more than anybody else, especially since they launched the EF uh, DSLR mount, because they just had by far better autofocus. Back then, it was just Canon versus Nikon for this stuff. Yeah, but it's in a new era now because we are in the mirrorless era, mm -hmm. and Canon has been behind Sony at times. So I think that it could be different at some point. This is a time when they do come out with their best cameras and they showcase them. And even like the Z9 was accidentally spotted at the Olympics in like 2021. That was when we got a first glimpse of the camera, at mm. least. It also happened with the Canon R3 at the Tokyo Olympics when it was leaked there. So we might get our first glimpse of a new camera at the Olympics. And that's why I'm proposing we go to the Olympics with our cameras, Tony, and we photograph the photographers for the camera <laughs> Olympics. Okay, I think we're gonna be real discreet with our 600 F4, just <laughs> taking pictures of photographers. <laughs> no idea what's going on in sports, just peeping. Like, come on, you're gonna to have to cover your cameras now because we're gonna be there in France. Maybe Canon rumors will send us as photographers. Mm, I don't think they will. We don't have too much concrete about Canon right now, but I feel so confident we're going to see a Canon R1. Can I give a little bit of background about Canon's flagship mirrorless camera's struggles? Sure. Okay, this is my own personal theory, but a couple of years ago, Canon launched this R3 here. And look how it looks compared to the Canon 1 series cameras. It looks identical, right? Like these are the same cameras to anybody who's not a huge camera nerd. And yet, it was not the R1. That one, like in that camera name, means flagship. One means flagship to these Japanese companies. And yeah. because they didn't put the one in there, that's telling me the one is coming. Something for else sure. is brewing. My own personal theory is Canon built this as the R1. During design and everything, this was going to be their Olympic camera. But then Sony scooped them. They launched the Sony Alpha 1 before Canon could launch the R1 and Sony outspecced their plans. Now it takes like three to five years to launch a new camera, 
And Sony kept the A1 so secret that Canon was caught on their heels. And they had to either scrap it or delay it or what they did was rename it. They said, no, no, this is, not, this is just a consumer camera. This isn't it because it didn't match the A1 specs because it had half the megapixels but the same frame rate. But I do think that the R1 is coming and so do a lot of people because there was the slide leaked and it basically says that a mirrorless flagship is coming in 2024. Flagship. Mm -hmm. A ship with flags on it, Tony. <laughs> And what else could that be than the R1? And why else would it be other than the Olympics in the summer of 2024? So everyone's rumors are hinging upon this little morsel of information. We've talked about what the R1 could be before, but let's just go over it again because we have ideas and we want to see them come to fruition. Well, we know that they're not going to come in with fewer specs than the Z9 or the A1, right? No. Because it's Canon. The tradition with the Olympics is you at least go one number higher in all the important specs. It was always like, oh, Nikon has 11 frames per second. Oh, we have 12 frames per second. Obviously, you don't want 11 when you could have 12. Yeah, you're going to miss out on one. They have to jump. I think it's going to be 50 megapixels. Right, to at least match the A1. To something. match the A1, but I also think that they're going to do a low res mode. Mm -hmm. Because when we're speaking practically of how sports photographers shoot, they, off, they often have to quickly offload their photos to their editor. Yeah. And so you don't want to be sending huge files. Um, right. it, it's funny. It's wildlife photographers who care about high megapixels. Sports photographers, they're pretty much fine with 20 megapixels. But you want the option. I mean, there could be a time when they, they don't need that. They don't have that rush and they want their camera to have more resolution. Yeah, and if you have 50 megapixels, you have flexibility. Like you can build in a virtual teleconverter with a push of a button. You could crop in 1.5 times or two times and get closer to the action when you can't quite reach. It, it adds a lot. It's practical. I also think they're going to have more than 30 frames per second to beat the alpha one. So Pick a 31. Make prediction. No, <laughs> no I, I think, think they'll, they'll have go, 60. I was going to say 60 frames per second. Um, no, you aren't. You, he copied me. He's lying. <laughs> but the R3 will actually do, I think, 180 frames per second, but for very short bursts. So I think they could extend those bursts. They could provide even higher frame rates with lower megapixels. We might see them break 200 frames per second with a lower megapixel. This is a movie at this point. You know what I think that they need to steal? to be interesting is the pre-release capture that Nikon has, which is when Nikon, they have this feature where you can press the shutter and then it's recording like 120 frames before you press the shutter. Think of the implications of that if you're shooting a very high stakes sporting event. You're not gonna miss the moment if you have like a few seconds before that of error. So I think I would want that if I were an Olympic photographer. There's another spec that everybody's fighting over, and that what? is the sensor readout speed. And this is so boring and nerdy. This is the time it takes for the camera to read from the top of the picture to the bottom of the picture. Like, there's a whole bunch of different lines. And for some cameras, they can be a third of a second to get that distance. Here's the thing, when you're shooting sports in a stadium, especially at night, there are lights that technically flicker, especially the new LEDs, they flicker could be 60 times a second, 120 times a second. So if you take a third of a second, you can see it might flicker at 20, 40 times. And then you end up with bright bands, dark bands, what we call banding. And that is image ruining to a professional sports photographer. They could not turn in a picture like that. And if you can't turn that in, then what you have to do is you have to switch to a mechanical shutter. The mechanical shutter, the fastest you get is like 12 frames per second with these full frame cameras. Yeah. And that's embarrassing. Yeah, so that readout speed is going to have to be faster. And I can also see them making that a really good marketing point because it's, it's easy to visualize. You can show it in visualizations and show a before and after. And they love that stuff. Yeah, and so people talk about a global shutter. Yeah. which could have no banding, no matter what the flickering was. It reads out everything instantaneously. That is the holy grail of digital sports cameras. I don't know that it's going to be possible, <gasps> but I think we'll get a fast readout speed, like something faster than 1 300th of a second out of the Canon R1. Okay. There was a big disappointment that I wow. learned from Canon rumors. No quad pixel autofocus. And I'll tell you what that means and why it's important. The R3 and all the cameras since, all the Canon cameras since the 70D have dual pixel autofocus. Pixels work in pairs 
And that allows them to autofocus on things pretty quickly. It works well. But you will run into problems when trying to autofocus on something with um, like vertical lines, like a referee's shirt, for example. Autofocus will just, it'll miss. It'll hunt a little bit, and that can be frustrating. When you combine autofocus points into four, now you can measure diagonally, vertically, horizontally. That is a feature this very old Canon 1V film camera has. It can do that. The new mirrorless cameras can't. So Canon wants to match that, but Canon rumors are saying Canon did not achieve quad pixel autofocus technology in time for the Canon R1 release or the Olympics. So I think we're gonna be stuck with plain old dual pixel autofocus. What about video? I'm thinking 8K30 at least, probably 8K60. Yeah, the Z9 has 8K60, and like I said, they gotta have all the numbers better. So maybe 8K61 frames per second. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and the price. This is where it gets tricky because the R3 is already expensive. It's $6,000. I think it'll be at least $8,000. I think maybe $8,500. Okay, this is where I disagree with you because their bodies have been really affordable. Like, look at the R5. What is that now? $3,800? $3,400. Though used, they're going for like $2,500. Pretty inexpensive. And... I think that they'll probably want to seem more expensive than the Alpha One to say they're better, which is like 6,500. I'm going to say they're going to be 6,900, and then they're going to go on sale for 64.99. <laughs> I'm going to pick the over. I think they're going to go a little bit higher. Okay. In the comments, tell us what you think Canon's going to do with the R1. Is there any crazy unrealistic thing that you want out of this camera? I want lots of little things, like the R3 is good, but of course the R1 needs to have two CF Express Type B cards. Um, I would love for it to have one CF Express Type B card and a massive amount of internal storage. That is so tangible. Give me a terabyte of internal storage so that I never lose my memory card. That would be nice. Um, also, I think if we have such a huge body, I think the screen here should take up more space. The whole back side should be screen because so often you want to verify that a picture is tack sharp before you mark it and send it to your editor. And it's just kind of hard with a small screen. I don't think you're getting that. Probably not. It just seems difficult. But I appreciate your desire. Um, I also so, saw some rumors of new lenses from Canon, including a super telephoto lightweight. That's interesting because they have a pretty good lineup of professional sports lenses now. Like starting with the 70 to 200 f2.8, mm -hmm. they have a 100 to 300 f2.8, which is crazy fast. Like other companies have 300 f2.8 primes, but theirs is a zoom, super versatile, super fast. It's also $10,000. And then they have a 400 f2.8 for shooting across the field and blurring the background nicely. And then a 600 f4 for like great distance. Maybe, maybe a 300 prime then. Maybe, maybe something lighter and less expensive than the 100 to 300. There's also already rumors that they will update the 70 to 200 f2.8 because we don't love the 70 to 200 f2.8. Like the image quality isn't as good as Sony and Nikon because they made it super lightweight, super small. Yeah. It's good for portrait photographers, but I think the professional sports photographers need something that doesn't telescope when you zoom. They, they need internal zooming. Yeah. They need better sharpness. So I think a 70 to 200 f2.8 Mark II should be out, I would, I would guess, before the Olympics in the next few months. So Canon has a bunch of exciting stuff. We're going to talk about Sony's possible two camera bodies that they could come out with. We're not sure which one. And then Nikon might also have something up their sleeve. So we'll talk about that as well. First, we want to talk about Squarespace, who sponsors this podcast, but also hosts both of our websites. And you can have one, too, for free for 14 days. Try it out. Drag and drop in your pictures and you're gonna see it's going to inspire you to take more because maybe you think you do a lot of portraits, but when you actually see them all laid out and have to choose your favorite, you're gonna say, is that really the best I have? I need to one-up myself. That's what I always end up doing. It's to inspire yourself. It's to showcase your best work, not just what you're doing chronologically on your social media. And it's a good place to have an about page. It looks professional. You can book clients. You can sell art in your gallery. Try it out for free. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. 
Thanks, Squarespace. Let's talk about what Sony is doing for the Olympics, because they've been pretty mysterious, pretty quiet, and they do not like to be shown up by the likes of Nikon and Canon. No, and I feel like they, they swoop in and they do that. They, they're good at keeping secrets, and then they drop big bombs on people. Like when the original A9 sports camera was launched, it was the first mirrorless sports camera, really, that we loved, and it completely blew us away. It was not like an incremental improvement, it was a huge leap forward. Yeah. So there's two possible cameras I think we could see. The A12, the Alpha 12, which is due, but it's already, I think the Alpha 1's already the best camera, so I don't know how they're going to outdo themselves. And then the A93 is also due for an update. I think the A93 is more likely. I've heard stirrings about that. I haven't heard anything about an Alpha 12. Um, but that's actually what I want. So let's start with the A93. I think it's a lock because the A9 Mark II is old. Mm -hmm. It feels old. It has their old user interface. It buffers like crazy. And when it's buffering, you can't like change key settings and stuff. Like yeah. stuff that drove me crazy as a photographer. Enough that I wouldn't use the camera. I also think that it's probably the A93 because the original A9 was launched just before the Olympics and it was really marketed as a sports camera and we went, when we went to the press event they brought us to an indoor track and field place and it, we just shot like all sports so this is a sports camera I think it makes sense for the Olympics and it's also very due for an update. Yeah so the A9 Mark II the existing camera is 24 megapixels 20 frames per second. The A9 Mark III is rumored to have 44 megapixels and 25, 26 frames per second in RAW. Yeah. So that would make it better than the Z8 by six frames per second. And you know how important that is when you're shooting RAW, not just. What do they just wait till the last minute when Canon launches and then they're like, add one more megapixel? <laughs> <laughs> and this is totally feasible because the rumor is taken from a uh, Sony sensor that is the information is publicly available for. So we know all this is technically feasible. Okay. And we expect the A9 Mark III to have 8K at 60 frames per second or 4K at 120 frames per second. Now, I dug into those sensor specs, and I can imagine some higher frames per second will be available with reduced megapixels, which we talked about, sports photographers fine with lower megapixels. This sensor could do 66 frames per second at 17 megapixels, and I think they would want that. <laughs> and that's a full frame, full readout. It could also drop to 5 megapixels and do 142 frames per second, which is better than what the Z9 can do by 22 frames per second. <laughs> and that is so, so important. That sounds really in line with what they would do. Um, I think that it will have a tilt screen. Yeah, I wish they would give it the tilt flip screen from the a7r5 yeah but they'll probably just do a tilt screen because they don't think that these photographers are going to be using it for video and certainly not for selfies yeah and then of course the two card slots do you think they're going to stick cf express type a i think so the, the a9 mark ii has sd card slots which is part of why it's buffering is such a pain so the cf express type a would be an update i i think the right format is cf express type b which both canon and icon have chose it's twice as fast and like a quarter the cost. But Sony can be stubborn in some ways. I think they'll stick with the smaller CF Express Type A because like they're so focused on making things small. Yeah, they are cute. They are. Um, all right, that's what we think will probably come out. But what I'm really hoping to see is an update to our A1. So an A12 would just be so nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. It, but what are they going to do to it to make it better? It's really good. I mean, uh, bigger numbers, right? Just bring up the It could numbers. be 100 megapixels and 40 frames per second. Um, no, I'm, that's not actually what I've been asking for. I want more usability in all camera brands. I just want the workflow to be easier. I want them to just offload to my phone or to my computer with far more ease. Um, yeah, that's what I've been asking for, and that's not what I've been getting. Yeah, it is tough because the A1 right now, that's their flagship, and it, I, I believe it to be the best camera for sports or wildlife right now. Mm -hmm. So Sony's already in the lead, and they want to stay in the lead. There's a rumor that they're going to have a big firmware update coming. So I think for these Olympics, they'll probably launch the A9 Mark III and just give a good firmware update to the Alpha 1. 
Okay. Do you think they'll add pre-release capture, which I'm just predicting all of them should do? I mean, the most reliable way to predict the behavior of any camera company is to look at what the competitors are doing because they just constantly, like, they're just looking at each other's homework and copying it. Yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah, I think there's a really good chance of that. And then what about something like video animal eye autofocus? Yeah, I don't think they're going to care about that for the Olympics, but us as wildlife photographers, I, I definitely want that because right now, this is, I, I'm a Sony guy, but I'm shooting video on my Nikon Z9. Vet wildlife video, because that's way better than the uh, Sony, right? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to be hoping and praying for the A1 too, but I'm feeling pretty certain about the A93. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think the prices are going to be on those? I think the A93 is targeting the wild success of the Nikon Z8, which is uh, priced at $4,000 about. So I think it'll be about that or maybe $4,500. I can see they'd go a little higher. I was thinking again, for a little higher. A little arrogant, like yeah. it's better, so it's gonna be more expensive. Yeah. And then the A12 will be the same price, like 6,500. Yeah, if they do release a new body, yeah, I think that it'll come in at 6,500 bucks. Any wild things that you would ask for that you don't think it's gonna happen, but you just wish? Do you have any wishes? Yeah, I feel like I have so many I can't even it's a whole Narrow different video. All right, we'll <laughs> yeah. save it for another video. And what about lenses, actually? Do you think that there's anything that's going to be coming out that would be Olympics appropriate? They announced the development of the Sony 300mm f2.8. Okay, so maybe we'll see that. Yeah, and that would kind of round out the lineup. Like, they have a 7200 f2.8, a 400 f2.8, a 600 f4. So that is a huge gap. And they've announced it. So we'll definitely see that before the Olympics. Okay, they're promising us. They're saying, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Don't jump ship. We're making more lenses. All right, let's talk about Nikon because I am kind of the most excited about Nikon because they've made so much improvement on the Z9. And I'm just happy for them. Yeah, I love to see their progress. And they've also not made a lot of inroads in sports photography. When you look at the sidelines, it's always been Canon and then a few Nikon guys. And then Sony came in and they made big announcements with like the Associated Press, like they used their relationships and stuff and yeah. wedged their Sony cameras in there. Nikon just kind of sitting quietly on the bench. But I have seen stirrings of rumors that people want a Z10. I don't think a Z10 is going to happen just because I don't think the naming fits in. Yeah, like they I, have the no, flagships are named one. Yeah, it's gonna be a Z1. Yes, because if they named it the Z10, it would seem below the Z30, which is below the Z50, and that's all entry level. You're right. It's got to be a Z1, but I do think a Z1 will eventually happen, and it's gonna be a big old built-in vertical grip type camera. Yep. Um, it's gonna be a super expensive camera, but they've been like having reasonable prices. What do you think? Maybe, ooh, I think they're going to be high. I think they're going to be like around 8,000 actually. Oh, you think so? I can see them coming in under Canon and Sony. I'm thinking 6,000. I think they will come in low. Okay. And honestly, while I love the Z9 with the current firmware, 4.1, there's still a lot of room for improvement, especially in the hardware. Like it can only do 20 frames per second raw does 30 frames per second in JPEG, or you can scale down the JPEG and get higher frames per second, but a lot of us do shoot raw, and that means it's pretty limiting. And I think the lack of a mechanical shutter is a huge deficiency. They advertise it like it's a plus, like taking something away is better, but if you shoot with strobes, the sync speed is 1 one sixtieth of a second, which is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of sports photographers also do portraits. You know, they do the like hero shot and they use a lot of strobes for that and often it's in daylight. The Sony Alpha 1 has a sync speed of 1 400th of a second because it has a real mechanical shutter. The Z9 completely lacks it. So the Z1 would definitely go back to having a mechanical shutter. We hope. Bring the mechanical shutter back. Um, also a better viewfinder. Yeah, it's kind of low res on the Z9. It is a little bit low res and then a faster processor. Because you noticed that when you were shooting with the Z9 and you were in APS-C mode, the autofocus was actually working better. Yeah, so APS-C mode reads just like the middle center, like yeah. half of the sensor. And so it's processing half as much data. And then suddenly the AF worked like better than an Alpha 1. That's really promising though, because that means any lag they're having in their AF development 
could be solved with a faster processor, and I think that could be done for the Z1. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking better autofocusing, even better, and faster processing. Um, but this is just like a very vague, blurry picture of what this could be because this is like the most far out there rumor of all of these. I've heard a few people dreaming about it, a few speculations, but I do think that they're still fleshing out the Z9 and that they're going to have more updates to that before they bring out a Z1. Yeah, I don't think the Z1 is going to be ready for 2024 Olympics, no. but 2026 Olympics, yeah, definitely. I do think Z9 firmware 5.0 will be Olympics centric. And I think they will probably offer better autofocus on human subjects, like specifically the eye tracking because that's a very Olympics thing. And maybe they'll do some refinements to the pre-capture buffer. What do you call that? <laughs> Is that what it's called? Pre-release capture. Yeah. Pre-capture. I think they need to change the name. They're going to change the name. <laughs> That's what I'm... Yeah, I think they should call it Time Machine because the way it oh. works is you push the shutter and then it goes back and saves up to a second before you press the shutter. Time Hop. Time Hop. That's catchy. So if you're filming a baseball player, you don't want a, a, a thousand frames of him swinging and missing, right? Yeah. You want him contacting the ball. So you don't have to press the shutter before he starts swinging like you would normally. You push it after he hits. And then you go back and capture it, and it saves you so many frames. But right now, I find the workflow on these buffered, pre-capture buffer things to be painful. Yeah. So if they can make that workflow work better and allow you to scroll through them quicker, distribute them better, I think that would be a big bonus. Workflow benefits in firmware 5.0 would be huge. Yeah, and the usability of that cool feature is important, and the coolness of the name is important say that again. What lenses do you think they'll come out with? Because right now they have a huge gap in the 300 millimeter range. Like they have a 100 to 400 zoom, but they kind of need a prime in that area. Yeah, that zoom's too slow for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Like it needs to be like f2.8 <laughs> or yeah. f4 at least. You're right. They need to match Canon's 100 to 300 f2.8 or at least give us a 300 f2.8 prime. Because right now all their lenses are more like wildlife centric. Yeah, they're longer. Yeah. They just came out with that cool 135 f1.8. Yeah. Do you think they're expecting someone to stick a teleconverter on that or? I don't know. I feel like that's for portrait photographers. That's for portraits? 135? That seems so long. I know. That's what people use it for, but it's too long for me. Hmm. All right. I'm interested to see what lenses they come out with. What are you all hoping for? Are you hoping for a whole other brand that we didn't cover? cover? Are you hoping that these cameras all do something more interesting or just keep gradually upping the specs we're already expecting. I'm hoping for more software features and I'm definitely hoping for the update of my Alpha One. Let us know in the comments down below. Um, and thank you Squarespace for making this podcast possible, but also for making super easy to make websites possible. Get your own at squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Use the coupon code to get 10% off. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Picture This Photography podcast. You can get it on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to the channel. You can subscribe to the playlist, or you can go wherever podcasts are available and subscribe there. Thanks so much for your support. Bye.